Hello, hello, everybody. I have a super special guest today with me on the Sisterhood of Sweat. Today, I have the grand dame of fitness, and she was married to the godfather of fitness. It was a fitness match made in heaven, Thanks, and I, <laughs> I feel so honored, you guys, to be speaking with the great Elaine LaLane. She inspires the lives of all of people of all ages and walks of life. Elaine travels the world sharing her energetic message about health and well-being. She is known as one of the pioneers of television. Elaine was always in the public eye and has been a respected guest on countless shows. She has worked as a producer, a host, a guest and a star for many years. As a regular as a regular personality on the Jack LaLanne show, Elaine spent over 50 years helping teach and motivate people to live a healthy and balanced life. Yes. A movement which kickstarted the fitness world as we know today. The wife of Jack LaLanne, Elaine a first-hand experience to the legacy and the life of Jack and his goals to change the world, all goals in which he succeeded. And I am very excited. I can't wait to just introduce you to this icon. I love, love, love her. A Lelaine, Lelaine, Lala. La 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 For short. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. I, I think yeah, I told you this before. A lot of people know. Why do they call her Lyle, Lala? Well, <laughs> we were being introduced at one time, and um, and th these people were introducing me, and they said, this is Elaine Elaine. E I mean, Lalaine Lalaine. Oh, I mean, uh, and Jack just said, oh, just call her Lala. And so <laughs> she calls me Lala. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There's a lot of Lalas today. La La. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what with the movie? There's some La La Land. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh! Well, you guys, happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> oh well, happy Happy New Year to you. Yeah. My story is I'm Lulu. For those that know and love me, because my uncle used to always call me Linda Lou, and oh, it was God. his caption was Linda Lou. What you gonna do? <laughs> Well, that is cute. I like it. I'm, I'm going to call you Linda Lou from now on. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what people call me. And then some really close friends just shortened it to Lulu. So, okay, Lulu. <laughs> Lulu. If you <laughs> if you guys have any questions for Elaine today, we are live on Facebook. So if you type them in the feed. I'll ask her the question. So that is a bonus today. So if you guys have any questions for Elaine, because I know I have a ton. Oh, you can okay. have... shoot. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to shoot from shoot from the hip? <laughs> from the hip. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. well, so I you know, and I think that we gotta, we've got to invest in ourselves, and we got to take time for ourselves, and uh, and you know what. It, we got to take time for the most important person in the world, you. Okay. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. And why should we invest in ourselves, Elaine? Well, we have to invest in ourselves because we have to believe in ourselves. We have to tell us uh, this. We have to tell ourselves that every day and every way I'm getting better and better, and every day and every way I'm going to I'm going to try to be. I'm going to try to to exercise every day. I'm going to try to watch the food that I'm going to put in my mouth. So. Yeah. Yes. And you are a testimony of that because I can certainly see you practice what you preach. Yeah. Well, your body is like a garden. It's dying from neglect. You know, if you neglect it, if you neglect it, if you take care of it, your garden is going to grow and it's going to be, it's going to feel good, better and you're going to look better. So, and you know, the fruits and vegetables and the food that you eat, it's, and, and, and the, it's like, a, it's like a broom. Your, your, uh, it's, it, it's, your, takes, uh, your broom, it cleans out your system if you put the right food in it. 
But if you don't put the right food in it, it gets all clogged up, you know. So fruits and vegetables are are your um, are your are, are your broom and your and your also um, <clears throat> your every cell in your body every cell in your body is changing from time to time. I know I'm just talking talking talking. Why don't you ask me some questions? <laughs> no no no. I want to hear what you were saying about every cell in your body is changing. Yeah. Well, it's continually changing, and. Uh, and and I don't know. Have you heard about the microbiome? Bi- biome? Oh yes. Yeah. And if you got either get, you've got either you either have a bad gut or a good gut, right? Yes. And if you put the bad foods in your gut, it's going to be bad, and you're going to have and and they 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 found out uh, uh, tests that they found that it, it has people are are uh, having uh, having lots of problems with with their not, not only not, not even memory they have they obesity they, they find that oh, yeah. the bad gut is causing all sorts of problems so if you have a good gut and you keep go, keep your cells going and you keep your cells healthy then it stands to reason that you're going to be healthy right well, yeah, I know that uh, a good gut, you know, like having the good, the right bacteria, um, you have to kind of help yourself along. And I take a probiotic. I take Dr. O'Hara's probiotics to help myself to have the good flora, the good bacteria. So I have a good gut because you could take the same person, you know, like you could take two people and they could eat the same thing. And Literally, one person is going to be overweight, one person is not, because the one person had the good bacteria in their gut that helped them digest and eliminate, and the other person didn't have good bacteria in their gut. So that's pretty darn important for your health. And it stands to reason if you put the good food in your body, it's going to help for you, help. And, and your cells that are changing, they're going to change you into a, a, a better and more healthy person. Oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. If you're filling yourself up with fake food, one, you're never going to be satisfied. You're never going to weigh what you want. And you're never going to be healthy if you're always just eating things that never fill you up. And how about those nibblers? I mean, I had an aunt that used to say, um, oh, I don't eat a thing. And then I had a, a friend stay with me. She was down in that refrigerator just picking all the time. And guess what? They were heavy and they had all sorts of problems because they were nibbling all the time. They said, oh, I hardly eat a thing. And they don't hardly eat a thing at dinner or, or, or lunch, but they nibble all the time. You, you know what? The oh, I live near the Hearst Castle, okay? The Hearst Castle was built on pennies. And, and lots of those pennies were, the newspapers were pennies in those days. And <laughs> build a big castle. And that's what happens to, to you. If you a nibble here and nibble there and nibble there, you're going to have a big castle too, right out to here. <laughs> 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 well, the other thing is you never realize how much you're eating if you're nibbling all day, right? You, you could be eating calories. way more and, and the wrong things. Like you could be eating, I don't know what you're nibbling on, but if you're nibbling on brownies or you're nibbling on, you think, oh, if I just nibble a little bit, you know, it's not going to be calories if I break that cookie in half, right? <laughs> well, some, <laughs> that's true. Well, some, some people have one eye on the, on the past and one eye on the future and they forget about right now what you're doing right now because what you're doing right now is what's going to you're it's walking and talking tomorrow and you're a walking billboard tomorrow so you're if you're if you if you put all the wrong foods in your body or not exercising you're walking a billboard and you're telling everybody that that's what you're doing actually oh absolutely right because I know many of us might eat our feelings. We may think we're hiding, you know, what we're eating. And, you know, you need to get those feelings out and deal with them and deal with the stress rather than stuffing them down because you're not hiding anything because it's going to come out somehow. It's either going to come out because you ate too much or something, you know. (laughs) Well, we're on Facebook right now. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Say hi to everybody. Yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Make sure you ask questions. And, you know, Elaine is here to answer anything. She just tells it like it is. So it's going to be straight from the hip like she always shoots. Uh, right here at Jacqueline.com. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What was it like being married to such an iconic man? I mean, what was that like? Well, I don't know any different because uh, I was like, when I first met him, I was 27, but um, I met him on television and people say, what's it like to be on television? All this? I didn't know any different because I was young when I started. And so that's been my life all this, all these years. And same with Jack. I mean, he was just like any other person. We're all human beings. And, and uh, he had a great sense of humor, you know, um, <laughs> I think years ago there was a, a survey and they, Asked all these older people what 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 made them live so long, and I think one of them was high self esteem, and uh, the other one was uh, a strong desire to live. But I think the most important was a sense of humor. <laughs> that oh Jack my gosh! Yeah, said, and Jack always said a sense of humor is so important through life because you know, and if you a lot of people, oh, they get, they're, they're so into themselves that they've got, I want you to be into yourself, but I mean, not to the point where it's a poor me self, you know? Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm oh, sorry for yourself. Me. You don't want to be poor me, but if you can, uh, if you have a, you know, husband and, or your a maid or whoever your partner is, and you have little uh, uh, differences and the thing to do is have a sense of humor. Jack always made a sense of, uh, always made a funny out of it. We never had a, we never had to have an argument because he would always, he'd always, I'd always end up laughing. You know, I'd always laugh, laughing. <laughs> we had a big, when we built, well, when we built our, one of our houses, we, we had this argument. Well, we didn't not, he wanted something and uh, I wanted something in, uh, on a, on a, in our kitchen. And, and so we were going back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. And so immediately he started making funnies, you know. And so I just completely blew it. I mean, I just, what the hell heck was it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> compromise here. Make a compromise. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. It's hard to stay mad if somebody makes you laugh during the middle of a fight. I know, that's right. <laughs> that's the best tactics because it usually then you just start laughing. And usually for, for my husband, sometimes when I'm mad, he finds it funny because I'm trying to be stern. <laughs> it doesn't really work for me, but I try. Don't look like a very stern person <laughs> but i was trying when i'm trying to be like stern and uh so then sometimes he laughs or, or i'll say something really off the wall and he'll just start cracking up <laughs> oh that's great well anyway um so now we have some que you have more questions because i have i can just chat away and chat ch chat away <laughs> that's what i love about you is you always have something to say and there's always like Tons of wisdom in it. <laughs> when you live to be almost 92 years young, let me, I'm going to be 92 in March. And when you've lived that long, um, you know, you got to, there's a lot of stuff up in your head, you know, <laughs> and you just have to ask me it'll, until it comes out. <laughs> you just got to let it come out. You just got to let it come out for all of us that need a little sense knocked into our heads. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, I mean, you were, you basically, um, you know, you, you were right alongside Jack and he, to me, is above your normal, like he is not your average bear. I mean, like I was reading a story about where he and Arnold were work Arnold Schwarzenegger, in case anybody doesn't know who Arnold is, but I hope you do. But um, he and Arnold were working out and, and uh, Arnold, after like 30 minutes, was just like... <laughs> Done. And Jack was going on for another hour and a half doing pull-ups and push-ups. And yeah, I mean, true. like, what was it like? I mean, what kind of mentality did he have 
to be able to do that. That's to me, just it's a beyond the normal individual. Well, he had a, he had a great drive, you know, and he, and when he decided to do something, there was no stopping him. You know, with those swims, he swam from Alcatraz to the mainland handcuffed when he was 41. Uh, be, that year before that, he swam underneath the Golden Gate Bridge underwater, uh, pulling. Uh, no, he didn't pull anything then. That was in 19 when he was when he was uh, 40. No, and so now he comes along to be 60, and he's he says, "Well, I think I'm going to swim from Alcatraz to the mainland, handcuffed, and I'll be shackled with my feet shackled, and I'll be I'll tow a thousand pound boat." I said, "What?" I said, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so I used to have to take him. Um, to, we uh, we lived in L.A., Los Angeles, then, and I'd go down on, on Highland Avenue to the ice house, and then he'd sit in the bathtub with his bathing suit, and I would I would have this ice that was like oh, I'm telling you, I well I was strong in those days, <laughs> and I'd have this great big bag of ice, and I pour it on top of him, and he'd sit there for an hour in the hot and the in the cold water getting used to the cold and then he went up and he pulled uh in his 60th birthday he's he uh swam from alcatraz the mainland handcuffed his feet were shackled and he towed a thousand pound boat and and then on his i well i won't keep going into all of them but on his 65th birthday he towed 65 boats with 65 people uh in uh in the boats. No, that's his 62nd birthday. 65 boats with 65 people in them, uh, a mile and a half in Long Beach Harbor. And then his, when he's 65, he towed 6,500 pounds of, of uh, wood pulp in Lake Oshinoko in Japan. And on his 70th birthday, he towed 70 boats with 70 people in them, a mile and a half in Long Beach Harbor, handcuffed, and his feet were shackled. Oh, oh my gosh. Just talking about it. (laughs) Oh my gosh. And I love it. I love it. I love that kind of drive and discipline. And what was his mission? What was he trying to show everyone? Because, well, it's the, the reason that he started this is because in those days, when you were 40, you were over the hill and, um, and, and, and that you were, you know, you were going downhill after that. And um, so he wanted to prove that just because you're 40, you can, you, and if you exercise and you eat properly, you, you can do all these things. Not necessarily what he does, but he, he was trying to prove a point. And so this is all his life is this is what he's trying to prove. And so now when, you're, when he was 60, he tried to prove that. When he was 70, he tried to prove that. So that's, he just wanted to show people that just because you're getting old, you're not getting, you know, you don't have to be, you don't have to be old. People are, when people are old because they're told they're old, you know, uh, if you're told you're old and you're kept telling you you're old and you're over the hill, then you start to believe it. Yeah, so. I think it's the stinking thinking. It's what's going on between your ears, like what you're, what story you're telling yourself. It's how you think. You know, being young starts here. It starts here. It's how you think about yourself, you and know, then what you do, right? Right. You have an arc. You an arc is attitude, resistance, and consistency. And your and your attitude is is the A, and uh, it's uh, no matter no matter what you do, you you have to have a good attitude. You have to yeah. You have to have a you have to believe in yourself. You um, and you have to want to you want to have a smile on your face all the time. You want to have a great attitude. If you have you been around people who are just depressed and they don't, and then they say, "Well, how are you today?" and it's, Oh, I don't, I'm, I don't know everything that's going wrong and this and that. And well, how do you feel that it makes you depressed? Right. So you want to have a good attitude toward life and then resistance. You, re, you want to resist the bad foods in your body. I mean, in your bad foods that you put in your body. Um, you want to resist the, um, 
you know, and you want to use resistance when you exercise. In other words, put your hand out like it. I, maybe we did this before. Put your hand out in front of you. Okay, now touch your shoulder. Touch it. And it's lackadaisical. Okay, now squeeze your hand. Squeeze your, make a fist. Pull it up real slow. What happens to that muscle? You're working that muscle. That's resistance. <laughs> That's resistance. I've got guns. I've got guns, Elaine. I know. <laughs> They're hiding under this sweatshirt. You see my gun right here? <laughs> hey, Elaine has guns. <laughs> I've seen Elaine do push-ups on the stage and uh, full push-ups. Yeah. So what well, keeps you motivated? What, what is your mission? Well, the, the attitude, the resistance, and the consistency. And the consistency is you want to be consistent about what you eat, be consistent about your workout. Uh, outs. And that's pretty much uh, I, well, Maria Shriver asked me uh, for her, you know, her Sunday paper. Uh, and, and, and anybody, uh, if you, you ought to go into Maria Maria Shriver.com and read her, her Sunday paper. It's really inspirational. And uh, she interviewed me. Uh, she wanted to know the three things that kept me going in my longevity. And so I told her that was the attitude, resistance and consistency and uh, she put it up. Is it still on her? If you go in there and you sign up, it's free, you know, and you just sign up for it. Um, you can read read what I wrote about attitude, resistance, and consistency. It's the Sunday paper of Maria Shriver. But uh, that's that's pretty much what keeps me going. And and uh, and so I I, um, I I I do my weight training and I do my um, I try to do everything in moderation. Um, first, when I first met Jack, he said, if you do everything in moderation, you can't go wrong. In other words, you don't eat a hundred apples a day. If one apple is good, you don't eat a hundred of them. If one, if, if vitamin, one vitamin, or if the vit amount of vitamin C you're taking is is good. You don't take overdo it. In other words, you just don't overdo everything, you know. So that's what keeps me going. So what does a meal look like for you? Like what is one of your favorite healthy meals? Oh, let me see. Uh, well, I'll tell you, lots of vegetables. <laughs> I have, you know, Jack used to have we go out to dinner and say, I want 10 raw vegetables. And I, he'd, he'd always have a salad, salad, and he loved clear soup uh, or something that didn't have, you know, uh, cream or, in it or anything like that. But my, 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 uh, I, I pretty much live on lots of vegetables and every night I have uh, like different kinds of vegetables. Um, and then I have, Sometimes I'll have a sweet potato. Sometimes I'll have a yam. Sometimes I'll have a potato. Sometimes I'll have a sp I mean, spaghetti, <laughs> but very, I don't have that very much. Um, but um, that's pr primarily how, what, I, uh, what I eat every day. And, um, and then I use a lot of, uh, I put mushrooms in my vegetables. And um, let's see, what else do I do? Um, but I, I, that's pretty much what I do, what I eat, you know, and so I, you eat a lot of vegetables and, uh, clean, healthy foods and you yeah. exercise every day or. Yeah. Every day. And, I, do, I do something every day. Yeah. Know? I mean, cause you were buzzing around like a bee at the world idea convention. I saw you in the morning. I saw you at night this girl, I mean, she does not stop. She, you were just nonstop energy. I watched you hugging people, talking to people. You don't know a stranger. So I would say that, you know, being almost 92 and here you are, the Energizer Bunny, that, you know, it's all your lifestyle and your attitude. Well, people ask me, well, how where did you get that energy? I don't know. I just, uh, I... I think it is. I think I think it is that a lot of it has to do with 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 working out and and eating properly. Um, I do I do go off 
on the on the um, deep end sometimes. You know, somebody will have a birthday. When I was 80, <clears throat> I told Jack, I said, Jack, I've been I've been so good all these years since I've been 27 years old and I'm 80 years old now. And I said, if somebody has a birthday, I'm going to have a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said, if there's going to be a little ice cream with it. I'm going to have a little ice cream with it. And he said, it's not what you do some of the time that counts. It's what you do most of the time that counts. Right. So, and but he was so strict with his diet that he never deviated. He never he never deviated. But I I now since I've been eighty years old, I'm ninety two, and I told him I said, and if I die, I die. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness! My dad would always say because he was so healthy, so health conscious. His right. name was Herbert, and we called him Doctor Herb because he was always like prescribing some kind of supplement or herb or you know natural food and and one day he did say to me when he got in his 80s he was like well you got to live a little you're not going to hang in a museum someday like you know <laughs> so once in a while you got to allow yourself to have a treat just as yeah. long as you know it's not all the time right That's right and we're i'm writing this book you know with uh with Jamie Brankison he, he he's the 8 minute of uh, the eight minute workout and so we, we're going we're putting we're trying to put the boom back in the boomers so <laughs> i love that i love that i love that you're writing a book that is what we all need to see and hear is that you can you know you know don't die when you're not dead live while you're alive right <laughs> well, there's a lot of jack in there there's a lot of the eight minute we're we're, we're we're basing this on the eight minute workout because we don't want them to overdo. <laughs> so the eight minute workout, if it's, you know, Jack used to say, now remember, it's not what you do some of the time. It's what you do most of the time. And so if you, if you do, if you work out, even if you work out five minutes, 10 minutes, 50, people used to ask me, do you work out like Jack at, uh, at, uh, uh, for uh, two hours, I said no. I said I spent twenty minutes to a half hour, <laughs> and that's part of probably what I did. And so, if we can get people starting with eight minutes, then that's you know we go we go on from there. But we got we, we don't want to we don't want to overtrain them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. what's but, your book going to be called, and when will we, when will we be able to get it? Well, well, in the spring, but I, I it's, it's, that's the, con the concept. We don't have a title yet. But. Oh, okay. That's okay. I mean, I wrote my book, The Sisterhood of Sweat, and, you know, I didn't have the title. I was writing, and all of a sudden, it just came to me. Yeah, right. But I, but the, the premise is, you're, we want to put the boom back in the boomers, you know, so. I love that because, you know, you got to have a little fire inside and that's what makes life worth living is, you know, doing what lights you up inside and having some excitement and having some passion. And, you know, I think working out helps you to get that because it gets your mojo back. Right. Right. Yeah. So we, we want to make sure that we we get to um, we get to we get to these boomers who uh, who are over 50, over, over 50, 50 boomers. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm a boomer. I'm 55. <laughs> you're doing it though. I mean, you're already a you're already a, an advanced Jack. I'm an advanced boomer. I work out for over two hours, just like Jack. He gives me permission. He yeah, gives me permission for my my insanity yeah. about fitness. I know. But you are um, you are a um, advanced Jacqueline student or advanced Jacqueline sweat what, what, <laughs> sweater. <laughs> I am going to have the sweat challenge online starting next week. So uh, I'm all about sweat. I, you know they that old saying they said never let let them see you sweat. I don't abide by that. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I just, I, I'm so like, I just, everything. Can you, I love the old story that you tell about when you met Jack and I, I want the listeners to hear how you met Jack because 
it's not the way you would think. Oh, well, uh, I was on <laughs> I was on television uh, in the early days when television first started. Television was on at six o'clock um, and then it started at four thirty. And I was I was um, I was demonstrating records in the Emporium in San Francisco. It was a um, 45 records. And and this fellow who was uh, his name was Les Malloy. He was he was on uh, uh, on radio. And, and they started a television show, and they wanted to know if um, and if they could get Terry Como on on these little forty fives. I said no, but you can get. I mean, can can I get Bing Crosby on forty fives? No, I can get Terry Como, but because he sounds just like him. Well, Les Malloy heard me, and then we started this show from four thirty to six every day on KGO TV. Now, one of the I I would I would be on the show, and I would get all the guests for an hour and a half every day. And then I got a call one day from um, one from Oakland. Got this guy who can do push-ups through your whole show. Oh, oh, that sounds good. We'll have push-ups through the whole show. Well, about a, about one, um, uh, about a week later, he was on Art Baker's You Asked For It show on the the next thing I knew, he was on on television on KGO TV, and now we're down. Now we're not at the transmitter anymore. We're at now we're downtown in the NBC building in San Francisco, and so we <clears throat> were in the newsroom. The newsroom had two people in it, and that and the news was very short, and so we went. So we. Um, we went to, um, let me see, oh, I got this, oh, my story is getting too long. Uh, but anyway, Jack used to come over, and <clears throat> he, he would do his show at, uh, at, Jack would do his show now. He was on television. He would do it at 9 o'clock in the morning. I would come in with my cigarette, my bear claw, my chocolate donut, and uh, and Jack would come over and say, you know, the only thing good about the donut is the hole in the middle. And then I, you know, I said, oh, yeah. And then he said, you should be eating apples and oranges, bananas. I didn't like you. Didn't, I wouldn't tell you this. I went, oh, yeah. I was with my cigarette, blue smoke right in his face. <laughs> <laughs> but. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, but he, at noon, he had an exercise class. And. I started, I started exercising because I thought, oh my gosh, uh, I, hadn't, I hadn't done anything since I was swam in the early 40s in the Minneapolis Aqua Follies. And now it's 1951. And I'm thinking, gee, the sands of time are shifting. And this, he's always saying that you should be wearing nature's girdle, not girdle. In those days we were, women wear girdle. My grandmother used to wear a girdle. <laughs> I used to think as a young girl, oh, my God, is that what I have to look forward to? <laughs> you know, strapping yourself into that. You used to say. I do not wear one. Nature's girdles. <laughs> anyway, so I said, nature's girdles. I think, oh, and so I'm, I'm listening to all these things and he's making sense. And then and then I, we danced at a company party. I said, oh, my God, he's a good dancer. And then when. <laughs> Uh, when, and then he used to come and ask me out, and uh, and I said, oh, I don't know, I'm through with men, I don't. Oh, <laughs> so but anyway, one night we went out, and we with his friends, and uh, he went over. We went over to this restaurant. We had to wait, so we went into this bar and over to the piano. The piano bar said, "Come on, Jack, sing a song for us." So Jack sings. Because you're mine, da 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 dee, da 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 da. I said, "My God, he sings too." <laughs> <laughs> you sing pretty good yourself. And then, and then he's, and I said, and then that night I found out he's got a brain. I said, "Oh my gosh, I I he's got a brain." So he's he's got a brain. I I liked I I loved his brain. I loved his dancing. I loved his singing, and um uh, and so a lot of people say. Oh boy, you must have fallen in love with that body. I said, no <laughs> way. I said, I fell in love with this brawn, brawn, and not his brain. <laughs> I, found, 
I wanted his brain. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. I fell in love with his brain, not his prawn. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. I love that story, and it's just so. It's so fun, and and so you can sing too because you sang to me the first day I talked to you on the phone. Oh, I have razor soup voice now. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so that's how you met him. And I literally uh, have a donut recipe. So if Jack was alive, I think I could get his seal of approval on this donut. I'm going to call it the Elaine Lelaine or Lala, whichever donut, because it's a chocolate donut and it's healthy. And I'm going to be putting it up on my website at chickfit.me if you guys want the recipe here. The, in the next couple of days, you're going to get to try this donut I made in honor of Elaine. Because when she told me that donut story, I just had, I, I loved to cook. So I had to make a healthy version of the donut. Well, you know, I have to tell you, John, if he was on, you, you ought to have my son, John, on one day. He okay. Is, I would love to. He's so funny. He could tell you, he should, he'll tell you the story about the, uh, about growing up with Jack and, and, uh, and, we we would make these. I, I would make this cake for his birthday, for uh, and I was used whole wheat flour and I used all, all the good ingredients, honey and this and that. And he says, it, "Well, it, 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 you have to let him because he's very funny. He's he's funny like Jack. He's a very funny person." But anyway, he tells the story where he says it was so hard we couldn't even eat it. <laughs> I have had a few experiments like that. I mean, even my dad was calling it peach confectionery and he was like, he was knocking on it because it was like a brick. <laughs> well, Jack, Jack one time, he's never had a pizza. Jack's never had a pizza. No. And I, I said to him, um, and I never had a pizza until after he passed away. And then like, uh -oh. you're being bad, huh? And I, well, I, you know, I said, <laughs> it's not so bad. I kind of like this. <laughs> One time he went to me, he, he says, I've never had a pizza. I'm, so he went down to the local health food store, got a, all the healthy ingredients. He got the whole wheat flour. He got this, he got the honey, he got the, all the, and he brought it to the pizza, a pizza parlor here in, where we live. They made this pizza. They brought it back. He brought it back. It was so hard. <laughs> we had to throw it away. Well, that's good. I wish my first experience with pizza was like that one. I would never eat another. So, <laughs> and it's like the worst, you know. I, I, I did have somebody come on a little bit earlier, and they asked me a question. They want to know: Can um, is Jack's are, is his exercise uh, videos are they available anywhere? Yes, we are. All, we have we have uh, 50, 50 of them. We have fifty of them here at the. And uh, if you would uh, just uh, go into jacklalane dot com, um, you you can you can get all his videos, his books, his, my books. I have a book called uh, w a Workout where I start at the top of my head. And go down to my bottom of my feet, and I got an exercise for my brain. I got exercises. You know, we have 55 muscles in our face. And how many times do we think about that? We always think about everything else but this. Right. Uh, put your put your hands on your uh, put your two fingers on your on your, right on the bones right here. Okay, now close your eyes. You feel those muscles under your eyes working? See? Yes. Okay, uh -huh. now on the side here lightly don't put them on hard okay and now put it on lightly not closed you, you've you feel those muscles working in yeah there? i can i can feel feel it all the way to my temples you do the same thing up see you do all this yeah all wow exercises and okay let's open your mouth real wide <laughs> we get uh, how many of us open our mouths do you, don't you feel a little cool right here <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, I did. <laughs> yeah, you feel a little pull. Now, go to the side. Go to the side. 
How many times did we do this? And okay, now. Then I'm going to do a little bewitched. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now put your hand on your forehead and stick your chin way out. Way out. Way out. <laughs> All right, now push. Now, now push, push against my hand. hand. Okay, now go down. I think I'm winning. <laughs> And now you go up and down. You put this pressure on. You feel it under. Guys, I'll try in this. Yeah, you, you, you it's feel better it. than a facelift. I, see, I see you right here, so I'm I'm pointing your chin <laughs> like you can see me, like like you're there. Everybody is here. You have over 430 people on. Really? Yeah. 430 people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you all come and. Uh, uh, if you're if you're interested in Jack's if you're interested in Jack's um, book, you know his books or his 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 uh, his videos, they are here and they are they're just they're all remastered. They're all like they're pristine, and so uh, and they're they're good. I mean, they give you a great workout. But and I will I will, I'll tell you, people ask me. Why does he wear those ballet slippers? <laughs> well, honey, in those days, in those days <clears throat> they did, tennis shoes were made for tennis. They there was no shoes made for working out like it, they are today. So, and and when you look at these videos, you'd think that it was it was up to date today. So. It's kind of interesting. What made him think? I, I mean, I, I literally am so like excited, everybody. I got to touch the iconic Jack Blaine suit, and I feel special because of it. Now, what made him? What possessed him to wear a jumpsuit? What? what where did he get that idea to wear that on TV? You know, uh, it, it's a story. Uh, it's another story. Um, one day he said to me, uh, let's go over to the Oakland Pants Factory. I want to have a, a jumpsuit made for the show. Because, you know, he started out with a, a, t a shirt and a pants and stuff. And so he says, I want to I want to have a jumpsuit made. So we went over to the Oakland Pants Factory and we each had a jumpsuit made. I had a green one and he had a red one. And I think <laughs> I think that's in one of our videos uh, of the green suit and one of the, the and the my little green suit is the little <laughs> one. But anyway, uh, that's how it all started. And we had the jumpsuit made, and and from then on, uh, and oh, I have to tell you this: the um, in those days they didn't have the spandex; they didn't have the one that stretches. So he had to have we had to have a made in wool. Because the only thing that stretched was wool. And so sometimes underneath the arms, you'll see a little bit of sweat. <laughs> <laughs> because because uh, it was wool and you're under those hot lights. In those days, the lights. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The lights used to be way hotter, right? Oh, really hot. Yeah. So and then sometimes it, it, it would be unbearable. But I mean. As time went on, it was better, you know, but those are, those are the olden days, but the olden, you know what, it's interesting that they, those days are not so different than today. Now, he invented, you know, the glamour stretcher. The glamour stretcher was one of our, you know, everybody's using a stretch band today. I mean, you see, I go on uh, Facebook, I go on, on Instagram, oh, there's, there's somebody that's doing Almost everybody's got a stretch band. So, and I have, and I, I saw this uh, piece of equipment called the Core Strength One. And that's what we were in, at, at, you, you saw it at uh, IDEA. Oh, yeah, yeah. You were doing all kinds of demonstrations. It's a great piece uh, of equipment. Well, we have this equipment that we have this, this, it kind of, it looks kind of weird, but it looks like a picnic table, but it has stairs on it and bars. And then it has all these, uh, attachments to it and then you attach the stretch bands to it when I saw the stretch bands I said Jack would like this Jack would like this core strength one so that's when I teamed up with the with the, the fellow that um, Jamie Jamie uh, Cameron so anyway that's how I 
And that's what we were. And now I'm now I'm back into stretch pad. But in 1950s, we <clears throat> we had this stretch band. And Jack says, I could do it, it was rubber. And I says, I could do all sorts of exercises with that. And so we'd go to Trader Vic's dinner dinner and we and I bring my pad and pencil and and uh sit down there and as we're eating and he'd say, well, we could do this and we could do that. And so I'm writing like I'm writing crazily. And that's how we came up with the glamour stretch. You guys are a great and we're team. The first one to ever have a, a stretch band, but a lot of people don't know that. We're the first one to have the uh the protein bar. We're the first one to have the the instant breakfast. The instant- protein shake. Yeah. A protein shakes today. That's that was all that came out of Jack's head. Almost yeah. every- that you're eating, uh, uh, if all those people that are, all all you wonderful people that are watching today, I said, I'm 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 telling you that uh, everything that you probably are eating or doing today came out of Jack's head. But yeah, because women wouldn't even be in the weight room today if it wasn't for him, no, right? No, that's true. So uh, and then uh, I I think that uh, he's not he doesn't get the recognition that he deserves, but. He, Jack was not one to toot his own horn, you know. He'd be on television and talking about, it and he'd be so enthralled with what he was saying that he, <laughs> the pitch. I said, Jack, you forgot to mention the glamour stretcher, or you forgot to mention this. <laughs> but he did. Oh yeah, because he cared really. That's why I think, besides the fact he had so much drive, he cared about people, and I feel like. No matter what the age, that always comes through if you care about others. Yeah, that's right. And, and that's all he cared about. I, if I heard it once, I heard it a million times. All I want to do is help people to help themselves. And I, I you know, it's just, it's, uh, that's the way he was. You just never realize how much you could change someone's life by helping them, you know, I helped a gal the other day, I went to her house, I grocery shopped with her, went and cooked in her kitchen, and a bunch of girls came over, girl party in her kitchen, I taught her how to make things that she's never made. And she literally came to me and she was just going on and on. Because she's like, I didn't know this was good. I didn't know this stuff was good. She's like, you've opened a whole new world to me. And I think we just never realized what just a little bit of help and, and, and also what people don't know, they don't know. Right. So right. I've, I've had that like, same experience. I didn't do exactly what you did, but I've had the same, you know, uh, Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know health food was good. I didn't know carrot juice was so good. Yeah. You know, right. A lot of people say, I said, would you like some carrot juice? Oh, oh no, thank you. Uh, and I said, it's really sweet. But I um, love carrot juice. <laughs> yeah, but but that's that's what happens. So that's what we. There's still a lot of people that need to be uh, awakened. You know. Yeah, uh, and I think just being that light, you know, and just shining your light, and you know, that's what he did. And he wasn't. He didn't have to necessarily pitch that hard because the light was shining, and people were attracted to that light. That's right. That's right. And the and. The, you know, he talking about his sense of humor. I have a in my I do a lot of um, lectures, you know, and in my lectures I show uh, bloopers, and uh, I have to tell you one. I think that was kind of, I mean, his sense of humor. I so now we were doing one minute a tip of the day for KSBY up here, and uh, and NBC, and so he said I. And he was saying, this is, um, oh, this is my lovely wife, Elaine. And this is, uh, and I, and I, and I said, and I started laughing. He says, what are you so, I said, you, he said, that long pause, that long pause. And he goes, he looks around like this. He says, I have a short pause. (laughs) (laughs) That's kind of, I mean, he's always a one liner like that, you know? Yeah. Um, My husband does that a lot. Yeah, I can't slide anything by him. <laughs> See, that's why you laughed in the in the when you were having the argument. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, humor is the best medicine, isn't it? 
Yeah, it really is. It really is. Now, does any, any of those 400 people out there want to ask me a question? Yes, we have. Let me see here. Pat, uh, I'm not sure if it's Pat or Patty. Pat Klein, she wants to know, do you recommend dark chocolate? She has some with 72% cocoa and says she eats one square every other day. What do you think of? Uh, I think that's perfect. I'd, I'd be okay. I mean, dark chocolate is, uh, I have a, a friend who is um, uh, a doctor of nutrition and uh, she recommends it and recommends dark chocolate. And uh, so, and I don't do anything without her. <laughs> so, uh, and I've known her since she was a student at UCLA getting her master's. There you go. Smart cookie. Oh, so, yeah. So uh, anyway, she's, um, um, so I, I, I say, okay, go for it. I say okay, too, because it's one of the highest antioxidants out there. Right. And when you're getting the 72%, you're going to have a whole lot less of the one thing you don't want, which is sugar. Sorry about the phone. I don't know how to turn it off. It's all right. Oh, you're just a busy me. lady, and they know that you're wanted. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind. Oh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, you know, with Jack inventing all these inventions and – you were right by his side you were i mean it was teamwork right teamwork makes the dream work you're right you're right i was by his side the whole time and and um i it, it was a great team and he taught me so much but i think that i taught him a little something too so uh he always uh he says um, you know why my you know do you know how my wife and i get along She's always right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. How many husbands out there can learn from that? <laughs> Is there any other questions out there? <laughs> let me look here. Does anybody have? Let me see here. Oh, you okay. Have so Cindy K. Jones wants to know if you feel a plant-based diet is more beneficial than a diet with meat in it. I, I go back to my roots, everything in moderation. I think they're both, I mean, I don't, I, I have me, I, I am a meat eater. I'm, I come from a Nor Norska and I'm, I'm, I'm a fish and a meat eater, but um, I don't eat a lot. In other words, I do everything in moderation. So I, I, I can't, I won't answer that because I, I don't think anything is, any better than probably a plant. My, now my friend who does my massages, she's been a vegetarian for, oh, for, you know, 25 years. But if you're going to be a vegetarian, I think you've got to know how to put all the proteins together because yeah, so many, you could be missing it. So, so, so many people go, Oh, I'm going to be a vegetarian. So they don't, um, they don't real, they don't realize that you, if if you have rice, you got to have beans or, or, you know, some lentils with it, you know, to make a complete protein. So. And and Alex Jameson that was married to the guy that did Super Size Me, the fast food movie, you know, about eating at McDonald's and how bad, you know, what, I won't say any brand names. But anyway, the Super Size Me, he did that. And this Alex Jameson, she was a vegetarian. Um, but she's now a meat eater. You could look at her site and read her whole story about how she went from being a vegetarian to a meat eater. And so you can just kind of, um, you know, you can find what you need out there. You just got to find what works for you, right? I don't think one diet fits all. No, no, I, I agree with you. Uh, and uh, I have a friend that was the same way. She was a She was a meat eater and she was a vegetarian for like, 10 years or 15 years and then uh, <laughs> back eating not a lot of meat but she's she's eating meat so I think I think if you, you go back to that everything in moderation department <laughs> I like that I like that and let me see does anybody else have any questions for Elaine well, I have her I mean seriously you guys this has been a real tweet treat tweet 
<laughs> well, I'm on Facebook. I've been I, doing too much Twitter. <laughs> well, I think I'm, I'm not on Twitter, but I think I'm going to go on Twitter uh, now and, and maybe uh, LinkedIn. And, uh, but I've been on Instagram and I've been on Facebook. I'm, yeah, I'm, I think you got to f- pick one or two, like, so you don't drive yourself don't crazy. Think- but I don't know how to see, I don't do any of my posting. So if any of you are out there on Facebook and you wonder why I don't answer you, it's because I don't go in there that often because with writing the book, I, I went back to, you know, our juicer, um, they had their 25th uh, anniversary, the TriStar that uh, distributes our juice, uh, the Jacqueline power juicer, which is in Walmart now. And uh, if anybody wants the, one of the Jacqueline juicers, they're in Walmart and, or you can go into tristar.com. Uh, anyway, um, so we went back to their, their 25th anniversary and um, it, we had a mass, they had a masquerade ball and I went back in the cold of winter. So I've been, I've been gone and I've been, but I have somebody post for me, but, uh, and every now and then I catch somebody, you know, but I'm, I want to tell everybody, I just love you on Facebook and, and I go in there every now and then, but not every day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, I know, and, uh, and you've, re- you've replied to me on Facebook a couple of times and I'm like, wow, she's just, I mean, you, you know, you have a lot to do and you're out there doing it. So, so I mean, Too much you know, time. you're just amazing. I, I, I'm just so I work till sometimes nine o'clock at night here at the office. So um, you're amazing. Yeah. I hope to be as healthy, fit, and have a strong mind, just like you, girl. <laughs> you're rocking it. I love it. I love, love, love it, and I love you. Yeah. So if any of you see, I I'm here at a desk. See now you can if you want it. If you're at a desk, you can go. You can do your push-ups can do this at your sink and you know I keep moving all the time I try to keep moving and uh, and I go up on my toes with you know do my face exercises somebody said they love your face exercises just now on, on the feed oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah you know Jack was doing in that face exercise uh one time in the, in the car and um uh, and um uh, he, and he was driving along and he was doing his face exercises and this guy came and then he was stopped at a stop sign and this guy said, what in the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't tell you how many routines because I've been an instructor for years that I would choreograph in the car to the music. Oh yeah. You know, stop at the stoplight. Somebody's looking at you like, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's exactly what happened to him a lot. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love that. Wow. <laughs> well, I, I would like to know, what are three simple truths that you have to give to our listeners today? What are three just simple? Well, the, the three are the Lelanisms. The Lelanisms. Well, oh, well, I would just, I, well, I, I think one is just keep in mind ARC. Think of ARC, A-R-C, attitude, resistance, and consistency. That's, I, I, those are my three things that I really, and if you really analyze them, I mean, we just, we just went into them a little bit, you know, attitude. Think about your attitude and then think about your, uh, think about your resistance, what resistance do, does for you. And think about that R, that arc, when you, when you want to overindulge or you think, well, oh, uh, I'm, that's R, that's the R coming up in me. Um, and the resistance, well, I want to put more resistance into my workout. I've, I've gone years ago and Jack had those, you know, the spas. Jacqueline Hill spas. I'd go around to the spas and I'd see people doing exercises and they would be doing their leg, you know, they'd be putting their leg back. I, I don't know where you can see me or not, but they would just be lifting it. They weren't, weren't, they weren't thinking into the exercise. <laughs> Are you, am I right? 
if you not thinking, focusing if you focus into that and into the part that you're working it's going to work for you because uh if you just lit you know you're just lifting your leg and you're not putting any effort into it you got to put effort into it so that's your resistance and resisting and then your uh consistency and being consistent about it being consistent with your with your um every everything that you do being consistent don't don't slack off in other words oh i'll do it tomorrow because when if you say to uh, i'll do it tomorrow tomorrow never comes right right so, right right or i'll do it later or i'll have, start next month next yeah, week that's right okay i don't want to do oh, i don't feel like it today yeah, yeah. so but and, and then you must think about moderation so and uh, being moderate about everything that's that's my i love it it's perfect it's perfect just like you that's and i have one <laughs> song you're perfect i have loved so much having you on today i love listening to you and just like one of the listeners said i could listen to you talk all day i totally enjoy you and i just thank you so much for coming on the sisterhood of sweat today (laughs) i do and can you tell everybody once again where they can find you on social media and where they can get the videos and the book that's coming out. I'm on JackLalane.com and you can get all the videos, the books and all everything on there. And then I'm on Facebook and Instagram and those two things right now. So yes. And you are happening. <laughs> so I, now I mean, you are now happening. I'll have to put on something. Um, I'll have to put on, I'll have to post something today per, quick. <laughs> yes. Well, people wanted to know because they're like really enjoying this video where they could, you know, are there any more videos with you talking? Because they said they love listening to you talk. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I'm on a, um, uh, one of our videos uh, is uh, Forever Young. And, um, uh, and uh, I'm on that video a lot. We do ex- we do exercises. We do uh, we do um, uh, what do you call it um, recipes. And um, so I think that, that might be one of the things they might want to see. Awesome! About yeah. an hour or so. I think so. I love the title. We do recipes and we do exercises and we do tips and all that stuff. But I love that. But you guys, I, make sure you review this in iTunes and let Elaine know how much you loved her being on the show, how much you loved all the stuff that Jack has done over the years. Just reach out and give her love to the sisterhood of sweat on iTunes so that she knows you were listening today and that you received something from what she's laying down. So how, so could they, could they, they can tell me on, they get a hold of me on Facebook too. Is that it? yes? You guys make sure to get a hold of her on Facebook. It's it's Elaine Lalane, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> I mean, I know there's a Jack Lalane page. No, there's an Elaine Lalane page. Okay, I, I was like, I I want to make sure where I'm sending people. No, Jack, yeah, send it. Well, send it to Jack Lalane too because I I look in both of them. Okay, and you can you can make sure you guys reach out to her as well on Facebook, so that she knows how much you really truly enjoyed listening to all her stories and just her you know vibrant spirit. And here she is, almost ninety two, and she's putting us all to shame. We we all could live a little higher, step a little brighter, and just shine. Just listen after listening to everything you said today. Yeah. Oh, okay, and you could, and I also watch. I, I also checked Jack Lalane one too. So, uh, so if you want to send it over, send it over to Jack Lalane too. <laughs> yeah, you can send. And it if home. you send it to me, I promise I will forward it on to her. So make sure you do review us in iTunes. I want Elaine. I want Elaine Lalane to have the top episode this year. Make sure you review it because I do rate the episodes. <laughs> Oh my God! I love you so much. Thank you so much for coming on the Sisterhood of Sweat. What idea this year? 
I know. You'll see me again. I'm going to be there. I'll be back at Idea this year. Okay. Yay. I'm going to be there again. I love going. It's my, my favorite thing. <laughs> I love going because I learn so much that I can help all of my followers and listeners with, and it just keeps you motivated. Well, let's, I'll, I'll give a, a, an applause to Linda because she does a fantastic job, doesn't she? And I think you should let her know too, because she is, uh, she's, she's, uh, she, she walks the walk and talks the talk. Bench. Thank you so much. I take that as oh, like, wow. Out. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for saying that. And, and I want to say goodbye to all the listeners, but make sure you listen and rate this in iTunes so that we know that you really got what Elaine was laying down today. You can have a healthier you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Can you say goodbye to everybody? Goodbye, everybody. Here, I'm going to, this is, that's, that's bye and bird talk. <laughs> <laughs> bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.